What are they doing? What's there? Hello. What is this? I'm just, just getting good footage I'm of you. I'm trying to take a walk in peace. We don't want any lack of creativity. No. It is Monday, Monday, Monday. Today we're gonna do Baby Megawatts Part Two. Remember a couple days ago I filmed that video about the high tide and low tide? This is where I would come in. This is the water at the high tide level. And before I was standing way out here. Now it's probably six feet, if not eight to 10 feet deep right out there. Pretty cool. As I mentioned earlier, today is about baby megawatts part number two. We're going to our very first birthing class later today called it's based off the book called Birthing Within, so it's Intro to Birthing, I think, or something like that, 101. I'm actually standing in the baby's room right now. There is, it's like filled with random stuff. We have nothing set up. On part number two, I want to talk about what I'm doing to prepare for a father. That was to be a father. There was a lot of questions that came in from last time that people wanted to know, like what books are we reading? What type of things are we doing? We are going to one class that happens every Monday. What I have read so far is I read a book called Dude, You're Gonna Be a Dad, which was really cool and really funny. A lot of great information came out of there, but just from a guy's perspective, it was super cool. I'm also reading The Birth Partner, which is a like a reference book. Um, it's pretty in-depth and pretty intense. I would say it's not as uh, as a fun of a read as Dude, You're Gonna Be a Dad, but there's a lot of great information in here on The Birth Partner. I'm also reading this mega monster-like book where it has all these fun pictures and it goes through, this isn't like a super, this is like once a week. So I kind of just look at what's happening, what's going on inside the body. The mystery of making a baby is pretty, ridiculously awesome. And then I'm also reading uh, Hypnobirthing, which, whoops, just dropped that one. I'm also reading Hypnobirthing, and so this is something new. I just started, I'm like in the introduction, so I haven't really dove into that, but I'm gonna, we're gonna listen to the CD and go through this whole process um, as well. And then also, uh, I'd say one of the number one, oh, check this out. We got a Sleep Sheep, Sleep Sheep. I have no idea what this thing does. Plays soothing sounds for better sleep. Maybe I should start using this now. I don't, I sleep just fine. But uh, yeah, and there are this guy's, this guy's also fun. The amount of stuff for babies is like ridiculous. You get this, you put it in the tub. All this stuff I didn't even know existed, right? But what else am I doing that I think is really valuable? It's not only something that I do at, about to be a father, but it's also something that I do the rest of my life with business and everything else that, that I just listen. I shut up and I listen. I listen to what parents are going through. I listen to what um, other parents have gone through. I listen to what it's been like to raise kids from parents. I listen to, you know, it's just asking good questions and then listening to what the other individuals are saying. That is something that I have found that works very, very well in my life. You know, and I just listen to what it is they're saying. And I'd say that's what I'm really preparing for because there's no way I'm really gonna know until it actually happens. As many books as I can read, the tapes I could watch, whatever that is, nothing is gonna prepare me for that moment that's there, right? But at least I'm just showing up, I'm participating. I mean, I think that's pretty a valuable resource and something that's very beneficial in my life is I participate. I go to all the doctor's appointments with Kate. I'm listening to what she's going through. We talk about what she's, if, what she needs, what she doesn't need. Does she need more water? Does she need more food? Does she need more sleep? You know, whatever that is. And we talk about what it is she needs. And then also I just show up and like want to partake. Like I'm in really for anything. And so for the rest of the time, like we're gonna hit six months on Thursday, it's about just preparation for between Kate and I. And I know with this, like we're spending a lot of time together, like quality, good time together, because I know once the baby comes, that won't, that quality time will not be there. It's gonna be there, but it's gonna be there in a much different format. Rachel and I were talking this weekend and she was just like, what is your, you know, how do you feel about becoming a father? And this is actually a question I get a lot, of t a lot. and. The number one thing that comes to mind is just the 
the change in lifestyle is the biggest thing, which is a super minor thing, but it's just up to 33 years. When the baby's born, I'll be 33 years old. And then right now for the last four years, four and a half years, it's been Kate and myself. And our life has been really great and I'm super happy with our lifestyle and the way our life has been. Very, very excited about that. And it is a little bit, It's there's a little bit of sadness that comes with it to realize that that's over just between Kate and I. And then we'll have to change what that's gonna be going forward. And which is really cool because I'm really excited to see what that change is gonna is take place. But it's also a little bit of sadness because leading up to 33 years, it's just been myself. And then in the last four and a half, it's been with Kate. And it's been really exciting. Our life has been great. Just pick up and go. We can travel the world. We've been able to do whatever we've been able to do. Now it's just that adjustment period now that once baby megawatts uh, comes upon us, that we'll just change and adjust to incorporate baby megawatts into what our life's going to be. Like I'm not, um, I wouldn't say I'm necessarily scared or anything like that. Like I, the way I look at everything, it's a project. So there's a short term project and a long term project. And baby megawatts is definitely a long term project, right? Uh, it's definitely not something that's short term. It's not like running a 5K. It's a much greater commitment. And I'll know all that once baby megawatts comes upon us. Trying to think. Baby megawatts birthing class session number one. I'll let you know how it goes when we get out. We're gonna go, these people are going with us. <laughs> the senior citizen smoking crew, they're coming with us. We just arrived home from our first birthing class. I have to say it was very informative. I really learned a lot. I learned how the woman's body is made for a baby is perfect head to be held in the pelvis and lots of other fun things. It was a very informative class. I learned what actually contractions are and I was not the only person in the class that did not know. Kate said she did not really know. I think it's a term that's thrown around and nobody really understands it. But it's the muscles that are pulling against the cervix and it's this contraction. Kind of like, you know, bicep, tricep type reaction. But that's happening in your stomach. Or in your belly, I should say. Well, that makes sense, right? Funny. We also did these amazing scenarios the second half of the class because it was a three hour class. So these amazing scenarios leading up to like giving different scenarios of what we should do. And I also learned that there's a process when a woman's pregnant that it goes from lamb to lion. And there's a shift that she makes when she's in labor where it'll be like lamb and it's here and she might be a little bit more inward and like contractions are happening and then it'll switch to a lion where it's like, this baby is coming out and it's just whole experience that she shifts. So there, it's always to watch for the lamb because then you know, or watch for the lion because then you know that's like when you should call the our midwife and that's when you should really prepare that the baby will be delivered in a very short period of time. I think that's enough for day one of birthing class. Yes, very informative, very glad I could do it. Kate, do you have anything to add? Feeling good.